Hey, thanks for tuning in to the next part of this building a template tutorial. Happy to continue by showing now what I would do inside of the groups. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six main groups at the moment. And in our last tutorial, we set them up. We put the effects racks in there. If you did not check that out, go check it out. At the moment, I have one rack built out here for just this little drum loop single track. And we made this super handy multi effects rack. So we want to now take this and put it on pretty much everything. I mean, we're kind of already doing that, but we want to put it on literally everything. And we want to put it on there based on what our needs are for making a song. So as a music producer, someone who's in Ableton, if you don't know, it's helpful to know that when you are EQing anything like a drum or let's just specifically say a snare, hi-hat, you don't want a lot of low end. You don't want a lot of low frequencies. This is, this is known, right? So I know that I'm going to automatically go into my snare most of the time, unless it's a special use case, and I'm going to EQ the lows out. Okay. I don't necessarily want to have to do that if I don't have to. I want it to be done for me. And what better way than put it inside of the template? So sometimes the snare you want it to hit down low, like really low, but this is the exception. It's most of the time. It's just a little tinny snare, okay? So we want to make sure that we don't have to do much once we get this in here. So I'm just gonna put this automatically right down there. And this is gonna be, and I could turn this off again, it's gonna be like, I would say my snare rack. Gonna replace this one that we put on last time. Now it's EQ to 230, okay, so the other thing I want to do is add this effects rack to the group of snares. So this is an instance that I would use this. Let's say there was three snares going on. There was like a clap, a snap, and a snare. Let's say I wanted all of them at the same time to do a, a very specific delay in the same order. Da, 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 da. I would typically have to if I was doing this the other way, I would have to um, make sure that every snare on the effect rack, sorry, every snare in the drum rack, my mistake, had those effects or the rack itself, after the rack itself, it had the effects. But what if I had another snare on this track and a couple snares in the drum rack? So then this would be the use case for putting an effects rack on the group. It'll do it to all of the tracks in the group including the, the drum rack that we put in, plus the audio track. So again, I'm gonna turn it off, save some CPU, and I'm gonna make sure that that's on both of these. Great, and it looks like it didn't actually replace that one, so I need to make sure I delete it. That's something that happens sometimes. Okay. I'm gonna just uh, disable this drum rack too. We're just gonna have like a super low CPU load going into this, just to make sure that we're not like adding other stuff that's just going to crowd things. Okay. So for the kicks, um, this is also something that I want to look at. So for the kicks right now, it's at um, 102. I'm going to actually just pull that back a little bit because you actually do want some low end in the kick m most of the time. There might be an instance where you want a kick to be... Um, a little more tinny, a little more high end, but um, in this instance, it's not. Actually, I'm realizing this is my old effects rack, so you can see the the difference here. There's only what eight effects, yeah. So I'm I'm gonna delete the old one because that was not supposed to be there. Yeah, a couple oldies there, and we're gonna drop the new one in. So I'm gonna go copy, paste. Okay, so again, we're gonna roll that down here for the kick. Everything's in place, great, turn it off. And I'm just gonna copy that, bring it straight over to the MIDI one. 
let's just tear it. So yeah, it's at 40. You see how there's some, some remnants of stuff down there? So like, there's some, there's some frequencies down there, but like, in my opinion, you don't really want to have a bunch of 30 hertz is floating around because the majority of people listening to music probably are not going to have a gigantic subwoofer, which let's be real. That's the only time you'll be able to hear 30 hertz. <laughs> so again, we're going to turn that off. I'm going to turn that off. And it's going to check that's all the new one. Great. The group has the effects. Oh, yeah. I'm going to put the effects group on the group of the kicks as well. And that's off. Done. Easy. That's on there. Off, off, off. Okay. Then the last or second to last thing, rather, is the hi hats. So, same follow suit with the uh, snare. And again, that's an old rack. It's so weird how that got in there. Here we are with the hi-hat. Now, here's the thing about the hi-hats is um, they're going to be even less prominent in the low end. And I need to rename these. This is a hat. I'm going to say hat one uh, audio because I might duplicate that and make another hat, for instance. And then hat two MIDI. There would not be really a case where I would duplicate the MIDI just because if I need another hi-hat in the MIDI group, I just put it in the drum rack. <laughs> so here we are. I'm going to make it here and then I'll move it over to the other one. So I'm just going to right away remove up to there. That's almost 500 hertz. You don't really need too much more than that um, in the low end of a hi-hat. I mean, it's a hi-hat. You know, so copy, delete this one, paste. Let's just hear it. Yeah, I mean, if I bring this over, there's some remnants of sound over here, but the majority of the hi hats, they don't really need it. So if there is some remnants, maybe it's from the recording itself like whoever recorded the hi-hat or whoever resampled it and exported it. And they might have done it on purpose. They might have not known that there was some low end in there, but either way, I don't want it. So again, turn off, turn off. And it is nice to have a bunch of samples in here for different hi-hat sounds. However, I found that if I had, let's say, 16 or even the full drum rack, 127, um, there was no incentive to go get a new sample. It was like, oh, they're all in there. I want to be able to find new samples and actually record new things for specific racks in songs. So I don't necessarily want to just pull from the same bank every time. Next is the percussion. So the percussion is, let's minimize these guys. Percussion is going to follow a similar suit to the kicks to where in percussion, you often have higher or sorry lower frequencies happening for instance if it's a our tom fill or if it's a taiko drum or something along those lines um but if it's like a shaker or a tambourine which i would consider percussion then you don't want to have the low end so this is going to be one of those let's just put it at 100 and, and take it by the use case and the 100, I'm meaning the, the low cut frequency. So I'm going to copy that over to the percussion two. And I do put two percussion tracks because I tend to use at least those per track. And then, of course, we have the drum fill, which same deal. I want to make sure that I have this around 100 because a drum fill, I mean, if you think about it, it's probably got some low end in it, maybe even a little bit. Not a, not a ton. And the same deal, which I have not done for the hats with the snares and the kicks, I'm going to put the group effects on the group. And that's not even the group effects. It's just the effect tracks I built for everything. And that looks good. Cool. Everything is off. Low CPU. I mean, we're still at 1% up here, which is good. Obviously, there's no audio in it, but 
if you had a bunch of effects, even without audio, it still shows CPU. So we're in good shape. Okay, the next, and I haven't added any tracks to these groups from the beats down yet. So this is going to be the first non beats group uh, effects and creating chains in here. Bass. So I love different bass sounds and I really want to make sure that when I open up Ableton and start to make a song, I have access to at least a few bass sounds that I love so that right away I can just punch out a bass line and not have to worry about fiddling with anything. And this is the, the truth of it for me. And if it's the truth of it for you as well, I understand. So I'm just going to go into the basic Ableton effects, sorry, instrument rack. And I'm going to just pull a super simple, a couple super simple ones. I like this one as a starter because you can hear it. It's gritty. It punches through the mix. So yeah, look at that. That's, I think, the problem I had. This is an old effects rack, and it's just auto-populating. So I do need to change that as the default, and we'll show how I would do that. So I'm going to grab the same effects rack we've been using. Copy, paste. Okay, great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and hit save as default MIDI track. What the default MIDI track option does is it takes all the effects that I've put on here currently and that is the default. Now it's going to save everything. So because I had this at an EQ, which I didn't mean to, it saved that. So good moment here. I'm going to put that at 100 just because. And I'm going to turn it off. And that now is going to be the default MIDI track. I'm going to overwrite it. OK. And just for clarity, I'm going to make this the default audio track. Boom. So again, it's going to load that every time I right click and hit insert audio track, it's going to load it with that off, as you can see. So then maybe I don't actually need to have, um, let's say, oh, it's funny, it copied the name too. Oops. Um, let's say uh, I don't want any effects. I just want to have a sample on there that I grabbed or just record guitar without doing anything. It's off. Again, it's not going to hog up the CPU. So we're going to go back to the bass. Now I'm going to call this um, bass MIDI and I'm just going to say bass MIDI stab. So this is going to be a single track that can host a variety of sounds, but the premise here is that it's going to be a stabbing bass, right? So if I played this on my fancy keyboard, as a stab. It's not a long note. And that's the only reason I called it stab. So we're going to just call this stab one. And then I'm going to make another one because I know sometimes I use two. Call it stab two. And I'm just going to pick another one. That's a sweet one. I'm going to add that organ bass because I've been wanting to add that to a track lately and it'll give me some motivation. Awesome. Keep that somewhere down there and save some CPU, turn it off, turn it off. And again, we have this default rack. So then at any moment, let's say I wanted to play this. I would just dial it in for that sound. So this is all situational because I don't know what I'm going to want when I pull into a song. So we're going to turn it off and the second one's off. Great. I do have one that's more low cut than another one. It's just, just what happened. Then the next one is going to be bass MIDI. We're going to say sub. Always got to have a sub. That's my very strong opinion. I really have been 
loving recently using sublab vst sublab is a phenomenal phenomenal vst that i have been utilizing for these gritty bases that are really easy to configure in the moment and there's not too much fiddling around so this one though specifically i'm going to use for a sub and i've been loving this preset i love presets by the way called a uh, full harmonics let's see oh it's so low i'm going to take that actually down because that tends to be much louder in the lows than the other ones are in the highs funny enough so the cool part about this is that wherever i hit this on the keyboard it's still going to give me the same note that's why i like this because if like i have a midi keyboard out that has uh let's say four octaves right and i play the upper octave it'll still play what's happening in the low register so look this is my one and then when i get back to here it still plays the low sub notes see how it goes right there and it goes to the top and then it goes back to the bottom like i could play <clears throat> way up here and it won't play anything and then it obviously tells me like hey we don't have any notes but even if you play on the twos it's the same note once it gets to the threes it doesn't play anything i like that as kind of a fail safe again this is just stuff that i would want to have available so that at any moment i don't really have to do much work to get a sub instantly going to turn it off because VSTs, as we know, take a lot of CPU. So next, I want to add a, let's say a mid bass, like a Reese bass. You know what I've been thinking about lately? The word Reese bass, like R-E-E-C-E -E -E or R-E-E-S-E, -E, however you spell it which is a very popular bass sound lately. If you say the words quickly, re-space, 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 it says re-space. It's kind of funny because you're almost bringing your song into a new space. You're re-spacing it. That was a re-spacey thought I had one day. <laughs> sweet that's all i want on there because it's awesome and it'll give me that middle crunchy part so um if i was to let's just say add that note whatever that is e and then i add the sub oh yeah that's off see look at that working as intended so they have what the other one doesn't that's why i like both of these so the bass the sub rather is just pure low and then this one a little bit of low but then i would tend to do this if i was also using it in unison with the sub oh that was the wrong one good job Something like that. Cool. So I'm actually going to keep those EQ settings because I think they are appropriate. You actually want the low end here. And for me personally, in this respace at the moment, I don't really want anything below, what is that, 86-ish? So those are the subs, and we're going to recall that. Rename it, actually. It's not recall. We're going to name it MIDI Bass mid and i'm just going to put the word reese because it's usually like a reese bass to me is, is a term for a lot of different sounds but it's always in that middle range could have a sub in it lastly which is actually going to go firstly i'm going to put um live input bass and sample so i do play bass guitar it's been one of my favorite instruments for many many years over a decade now and i tend to put it in songs you know randomly i might not do it every song i might not do it for a month but 
then if I go on a bass kick, I want to make sure there's a spot for it. This is also helpful to have one of these tracks in here because if let's say you're using splice to bring a sample in of a bass, it's not a MIDI, right? It's audio. So if you bring an audio sample in, you're going to need an audio track. That's why I have one audio track in here and I could always duplicate this out if I need to, but it's just a placement because it might be, like I said, my bass that I play or a sample from Splice, for instance. And I'm going to make all these the same color because orange is a good color for bass, in my opinion, because it is the, the low end. I like to think about chakras, the sacred. Next is samples and FX. So this is going to be a pretty basic group. I'm not going to do too much. And before we do that, I just want to make sure that the group bass also has this lovely effects rack on it. There we go. Perfect. So the group effects samples, I'm just going to have that on the clipboard right now. Make sure that's going on here. These are essentially um, going to be different sounds that come in and out of the track that signify transitions like whooshes and white noises and whoosh, different things like that. So because of that, I'm going to put this rack on here with a big low cut because you tend not to need low frequencies and effects like this. I'm going to also pop in right out the bat. I'm going to kick up the reverb because typically you want reverb on effects. And then the kicker, I'm going to turn it off. So it's on, right? As soon as you turn it on, boom, you got the reverb. So there's a, a use case for this um, white noise. I have some white noise samples that I keep in here just for this purpose, like this, for instance. Let's just, oh yeah, unwarp your samples that you use for sweeps and risers and white noises, it's, unless it's matched to a beat. This is really helpful because what happens in Ableton and most other DAWs, actually it's just what happens in audio in general, is that when something is warped, it will create artifacts or things that are not actually in the sound. To me, an artifact just says that it's warped at the wrong BPM. So if I undo the warp, unwarp that I did, and I put this at like, let's say 225 tempo. Going down. And you can really hear it when it's low. And you hear how different that sounds at different tempos. It's not just the speed of it, it's like the character of it. You can also change the warp mode, which is cool. Some people do this and actually get really sweet effects. which you can technically resample and make another another riser from what you just pulled. Texture is cool. So these are all just things to play around with. Um, but at the moment, what do I have this on? 110 maybe? I'm just going to on warp just so you can hear what's happening here. I might even add some more reverb. That's good. So without the rack, with the rack, like that's already pretty tuned up to what I would already put on it, you know? So again, this is just a process to make things easier so that you don't have to add this after you already add a sample and then to me, it's like a waste of time to have to do this every single project. And this is why I make this template. And that's why I take so much time making this template because it's going to save me hours, days, weeks down the road of just time fiddling with stuff when I know what I want most of the time, or I know what I think I might want because that's the purpose of an effects rack. Same deal with the two. So that's two effects holders. Then I'm going to put a uh, crash um, 
slash splash. So this is like a place for a symbol. And it might be a, a ride up or a ride down, something like this, or it could be either way, same effects rack. Like totally different with that rack on. It's really just the reverb doing most of the work, but everything's working in its favor. And then lastly, I'm just going to add another one, and that's just going to be blank. We're going to just say here uh, X, because X is going to give it to you. I don't know what that's going to be. That's why it's X. So I'm going to have all these off. Great. And then the effect track is on the sample group. Now, I did not take this down five decibels, but I'm going to actually take this down seven decibels because FX tend to be loud in the frequency range of the song. So I like to have them lower most of the time. That does it for the effects and samples group. I'm actually rename this FX slash samples because FX is primarily what this is used for. Um, and then the X, I could duplicate this track out a billion times and it would just give me a, another one. And then I could just rename that another thing. And that's a placement. Like if I want to drag some samples from Splice that don't have a home, maybe it's like a, a sound that just does some random thing that's not really a percussive sound. It's not really a synth sound. Maybe it's something kind of in the middle. That'll be a good spot to put that. 